Good morning, guys. Hey, uh, Troy Winchester here, Davis Technical College. Today, what we wanted to do was shoot a short video on how to use the optical comparator. We're going to show you how to turn it on, how to do some simple measurements, and give you some step-by-step -step instructions. So stay tuned. Okay guys, to turn this machine on, all you have to do is reach on the back, slide the little switch to your left. That'll turn on the control. To turn on the main lamp, just turn on the, the main switch down there. Okay guys, uh, we've got the machine turned on, we've turned on the main lamp. Uh, there, there's just a few simple controls that you need to be familiar with. Um, you've got right in front, you've got a big hand wheel that raises the machine up or down. That will, that will get your part uh, showing on the screen. You've got a focus knob which will move the table forward, positive and negative, which will uh, put the shadow uh, or image in focus. You have a knob here on the right hand side that will adjust for left and right measurements, okay? So, um, you've also got your controls here on the control panel. For this short video, we're just going to talk about three of the base, most basic options. We're gonna talk about letter C, letter D, and letter I. You push letter C, there, uh, appears a circle on your screen. And the circle has three numbers on there. You can see a one, a two, and a three. And what that's telling you is you need to pick three points on the shape that you're using. Now the shape that I've got on the screen is a radial shape or a radius. And so we wanna measure that radius. The machine is going to measure that by letting us Move the crosshairs to one of three points. As soon as we get the little crosshairs on the screen, we're gonna come over here and we're gonna push load. Number one is flashing right now. So as soon as I push load, it jumps to number two, prompting me to move to my second location. So I'm gonna move approximately to the middle of that radial feature, push load. And it's telling me to pick the third point. I'm gonna move up and pick the third point, load. Don't worry about X and Y right now. I'm not even sure what they do for what we're doing. We're gonna pay attention to the D value right here. And the D value of this particular radius is 103 thousandths and six tenths. So you would divide that in half and that would be the radius. So we're talking approximately a 50 thousandths radius that's on this part right here. So let me set that back on the machine. So that is how you can measure the radius when you're checking the radius on your lathe activity, okay? Let's move to the next feature which again, I'll show you, is a chamfered feature. Now a chamfered feature in the machine shop, generally a chamfer will mean 45 degrees. Okay, that's, that's a pretty safe assumption. So we're gonna go ahead and hit cancel and we're gonna pick letter D right now. Letter D. Letter D is one of the most probably used buttons because you can use it a lot of, for a lot of different features. Letter D is just going to measure between two selected points. It can measure a distance, it could measure a diameter, it could measure a length of a chamfer, it can measure all sorts of things. But what we're gonna do, we're gonna put the corner of our crosshairs right at that first element. And we're going to say load, okay? Now, 
If I move the crosshairs in X or Y individually and hit load again, it would tell me one dimension only. But if I move both the X and the Y to the second corner and hit load, then it gives me my Y distance, which is my up and down measurement. It gives me my X distance, which is my left to right measurement. And it also gives me the calculated length of the hypotenuse. So this is, uh, it, it's maybe half a step more work, but it gives you uh, a lot more information. So we've got a Y distance of 32. So that's up and down. We've got a, a X distance of about 54. And if you remember from trig, if you have two angles that are the same size, you kind of know that your, your angles are probably 45 degrees. Uh, we're going to hit cancel. And now we're going to skip all the way to letter I. Letter I is, a lot of people get this confused with letter D, because letter I is actually measuring the angle. So we're going to measure the angle of this part. We move our horizontal line back up till it's lined up with the bottom of our image. We hit. And there's a 1, 2, and a 1, 2. There's two points on each of your two lines that you're working with right here. So what I do is I just find the bottom edge of my part, I pick my first point, and then I just move straight along there. I don't mess with Y at all. That way I get a perfect reading. And I basically created a straight line. Now I move over to the actual part and pick technically point three. It's the first point on the second feature. Load. And, and you want to cover as much of the line as you can. You'll get a better reading if you space your uh, pick points out mm. as much as possible. So we'll take advantage of this and go all the way over there. That's just going to give you a more accurate reading. Uh, we'll go ahead and hit load on that last point. So I've picked two points on the bottom and two points on the angled line. Again, don't worry too much about what your X and your Y are telling you right now. Uh, but what you really are concerned with was A1, think of it as angle one and angle two. If you add those both together, you should get 360 degrees. So depending on which way we move, it's either 32 degrees go in one direction or 327 go in the other direction. So most of the time you'll use the small number. And so this part has a chamfer on it that is 32 degrees 40, 0.046 minutes. Um, and when you're talking degrees, minutes, and seconds, we're not too worried about these numbers over here unless it gets to be a big number, okay? So roughly 32 degrees. All right, guys, that's pretty much it as far as the how-tos on this part. Um, a couple of things you need to be aware of is as you put your part on the table, focusing it, um, if, you can, if the light comes past the edge, you'll want to look at that and kind of ignore it. What you want to do is you want to pay attention to this dark, bold outline. That's what you're trying to focus in. And you can see I've blurred the image there. And I come back and I bring it in. And the camera probably can't see it, but there's almost a ghost image there. And as soon as that ghost image goes away, I've probably got the ultimate focus. Now, different eyesights are going to change. So your focus and my focus may not be exactly the same. But get that focus in there. Use your crosshairs and pick up those points. There is a cheat sheet here for the operation keys that you can look at and get some additional information. There's also the QM Data 200 um, process, or owner's manual that you can use if you have questions. 
Um, watch this video. If you, ha if you still have problems measuring your part, please see your instructor. Thanks, guys, and good luck.